This week was a big week in the grand scheme of things. The contractors returned, the engineer approved the structural details, and the beams at the back of the house and in the outbuilding were going in. While my builders prepared the steels for installation, I got on with some strimming, waiting for them to call me over to help out. I'll be honest here, the next series of clips have been heavily edited to make me look like I was useful. You guys hold it? Yeah. Let's go inside. <laughs> okay. Yeah, push. Yeah. What, what, what? Up. Now, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. I think we all underestimated how heavy this actual beam was and we were so relieved when it was finally in place. The other two beams were smaller and lighter and fortunately I wasn't needed to help out on these. The beams were fixed to the existing slab with bolts threaded through the web of the steel. By mid-afternoon, all three steels were in place and I was pretty happy that we reached this milestone. Before the props can be taken away, we need to weld on some additional plates and add some more bolts into the existing slab. Once that's done, some non-compressible grout needs to go between the existing structure and the steel. This fills any gaps and ensures a full even bearing. A few days later I was back in the outbuilding to clean it up and get it ready for the solar system install.
Believe it or not, this is the second time I'm using a jet washer in this space. The first time round, I think I must have missed out the ceiling in this area. The walls and the ceiling are covered in soot and smoke damage. The previous owner used to burn stuff in here, I'm not sure why. In a previous video I built this metal frame which will support all of the electrical components for my solar system. I want the outbuilding to be off grid when it comes to electricity and I'm going to start with a small system and work my way up to something bigger. Okay quick check in uh, where I am at the moment. I had some leftover metal c-section uh, it's pretty flimsy stuff, but my plan is to, well, was to build a little platform here to support the battery. Um, I find this stuff quite, well, I haven't mastered how to use it properly. I know that I, instead of trying to slot C-section into C-section, uh, I should use another rail, but um, I haven't got that, so I've just tried to do it like this, and created two little boxes uh, 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters. Uh, this one over here is quite straight and square. This one isn't so much, but I'm going to try and tweak it so they're both um, good enough. And that is going to support the platform which the battery is going to rest on. I started off building the base for the battery, arguably the most important part of an off-grid system. And that's where this week's video partner, EcoWorthy, comes in. EcoWorthy started in 2007, making affordable solar solutions for people who actually build things themselves. Their kits are straightforward, panels, inverter, batteries, everything you need to get reliable power anywhere. EcoWorthy sent me out their 150 amp hour lithium phosphate battery. I'm going to use this to power some of my tools, recharge batteries and power the lighting in this workshop. There are so many tutorials and guides out there to, to help you build your own system and EcoWorthy is a great place to buy your components. I'll leave a link in the description box for you to check them out for yourself.
I have put together a solar system before, but this is definitely not a how-to guide. There are lots of things I can do to improve safety, and using an old piece of rebar as an earthing rod is definitely not a full-time solution. Before I start using this properly, I'm definitely going to make a few upgrades to improve the overall safety of the system, so don't worry. The system is fairly simple. The solar panel is connected to a solar charge controller. This regulates the power going into the battery to prevent overcharging. The battery then stores that energy and from there an inverter converts it to usable AC power for tools, lights or whatever you're running. So hopefully when I flick the switch, the lights will come on. Okay, so the lights are working, which is great. There's a few final touches I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna tidy things up and make it a bit neater and potentially hide the cable around the back of the OSB like I've done with the other ones. With rain on its way, I decided to degrease and rust proof the beams. The beams are exposed to the elements at the moment, but eventually they'll be covered in insulation and rendered just like the rest of the wall.
It might not look like much, but this is a definite upgrade from last year's log storage. Last year we had a log burner installed in November, and the logs that we bought at that time were fairly damp. This year we decided to get our logs early to give us time to dry them out before the winter. As you can see, this is a temporary setup, but in the future I hope to have something more permanent. That's all for this video. If you're new here, thanks for watching. And if you've been here before, thank you for sticking with me. It's taking some time, but I promise that there will be a conclusion to this project. It will just take some hard work and patience. One thing you might have noticed is that this video is mostly voiceover. I've dabbled with the TV presenter style delivery in my videos before, but it's just not my style. Hopefully with a narration over the top of the video gives you a better understanding of what's going on, but also keeps you focused more on the action rather than me droning on. And one last thing, if you are interested in any sort of solar system or off-grid system, check out EcoWorthy, link is in the description below.